Rasulullah when my servants ask about me, tell them I am near and I accept the dua of anyone who makes the dua. And the Prophet wasallam says that there is nothing that is more noble in the eyes of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala coming from the servants than dua. Laysa shaykun akramu ala Allahi min dua And he says, he says when a servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes a dua that is not an ithm of qati'at rahim that the dua has, does not have any sin in it Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala will give this person one of the three things number one Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala blesses him with what he prays, what he asks for. Or Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala reserves him goodness other than what he wanted. That means Allah shows for him subhanahu wa ta'ala. Or there was some musaib, some evil that was coming on his way that Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala removed. So in this uh, ayah and these ahadith, we know that Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala is always here, very near to us, waiting for us to make dua. Allah says, وَقَالَ رَبِّكُمُ دُعُونِي أَسْتَجِبْ لَكُمْ And your Lord says, call me and I'll answer. You know, that's the difference between Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala and His servants. People, no matter how generous or good they are, if you keep asking them, you will get to their nerve. But Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, if you stop asking him, if he was to have nerve, you will get to his nerve just by not asking him subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam from his ahadith and from the Quran teaches us that there are manners of dua. There are times and places of dua, meaning when we make dua, there are ways which we need to do for our duas to be accepted. But there are places that are favored that Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala chose, which if we use to make dua, Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala will accept our dua. Many are places mentioned by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam places such as the Masjid. The Masjid is the house of Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. And dua yawma arabha, dua will drinking water of Zamzam. Dua when a person is in the uh, Kaaba or by the Hajar al Aswad. And Dua after um, stoning Jamratul Sughra uh, as the Prophet Sallallahu told us in Jamratul Musta. And Dua during the Tawaf when one is making, when one is making <coughs> Umrah or a regular Tawaf. And Dua in the Muntazam. Muntazam is part of the Kaaba and under the Mizab is called the Mizab al rahma And when a person when the person is around the Kaaba itself, dua is accepted. When we make a Safa Sa'i bin al Safa wal Marwa also is a place where our du'as are accepted. And when a person is behind Maqam Ibrahim alayhi salam in Mecca, when a person is in Mina, in Muzdalifa, when when the person throws the Jamarat. And even some scholars say when a person slaughters their hadyu or their uh, is also a place of dua because you are sacrificing for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We mentioned many places that are not, you know, that, that are not here now, that are near to us, but the place in which we are now is a place of uh, acceptance of dua. And alhamdulillah, we have this place every day, every moment in our life. That is the masjid. There are also times which Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam teaches us that there are times when Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala accepts our dua. And one of those uh, times is this day of Jummah, which is the best of all days of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, tells us. So in, uh, in, when Jummah, when Friday comes, it is a very great time for us to utilize, to make dua. And the last part of the night is also a very great time for one to make uh, dua. And the time that I want to talk about, which is one of those times, if it is not the best of all of them, it is one of the best of all of them, that is the very time we are living now.
time of fasting, especially fasting of the month of Ramadan, which Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala chose to reveal this holy book to Rasulullah the holiest being as created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Because we as um, servants, we as uh, human beings, we have uh, things that are on our way to success. And Ramadan comes to remove all these things. The poor say, Iblis wa dunya wa nafsi wa hawa kaifa al-khalas wa kulluhum a'dai. He says, I have before me Iblis and dunya, my nafs and my desires. They are all my enemies, so how can I be served? You know, but I mean, I would put the uh, hawa in the category of nafs because Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala says, so whenever you have nufs, you have hawa. Then the fourth category is a category that um, I would call Qur'anah Usu or Ikhwan Usu, as Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala calls it in the Qur'an. When he says in Surah Al-Burqan, وَيَوْمَ يَعَدُّ الظَّالِمُ عَلَى يَدَيْهِ يَقُولُ يَا لَيْتَنِ اتَّخَذْتُ مَعَ الرَّسُولِ سَبِيلًا يَا وَيْلَتَا لَيْتَنِي لَمَا اتَّخِذْ هُلَانًا خَلِيلًا لَقَدْ ضَلَّنِي عَنِ الذِّكْرِ بَعْدِ إِذْ جَاءَنِي وَكَانَ الشَّيْطَانُ لِلْإِنْسَانِ خَلُّلًا إِنَّ اللَّهَ تَبَارَكَ وَتَعَالَى إِنْ سُورَةُ الزُّخْرَفْ سَيَسْ أَدَخِلَّاءُ يَوْمَئِذٍ بَعْضُهُمْ لِبَعْضٍ عَدُوٌّ إِلَّا الْمُتَّقِينَ يَا عِبَادِي لَا خَوْفٌ عَلَيْكُمُ الْيَوْمَ وَلَا أَنْتُمْ تَحْزَنُونَ so we have these enemies before us. We have our nafs, which is the biggest enemy and the most neglected enemy, and the enemy we, we compromise our, all our life for. We do everything our nafs tends to invite us to, and we think this maybe is the best thing, but if we really think about it, we know it's the worst thing. People, the ulama, say, if you do not busy yourself with good, your nafs will make you busy with evil. And we don't want to be busy with evil. Imam Busir, he said, Rahmatullah alayhi, the nafs of God quickly, in two men who shabba ala hubbir rada'i, wa in tabwin hu yon vaqimi. Nafs is just like a child. If the mother does not stop breastfeeding the child, the child will never stop. You know, if the child will grow, you know, uh, asking for, for, for price. But if, if you stop it in the beginning, it, inshallah, can, it can hurt. But with time, it um, will come. I think all of us have been uh, breast breastfed breast, breast one day. And I don't think any of us is going home to ask their mother if they can uh, breastfeed them. So we have this al jabahat al arbaatu or these tahadiyat uh, before us. So if our nafs, when we fast, fast takes the hawa, takes the desire of the nafs, because now we are fasting, we have no um, food with us, we have no drink with us, we have nothing with us, we are empty. And when the nafs is empty, know that the soul is being fed. So when the nafs is empty, now I'm removing that very obstacle from my way of excellence, from my way to the divine, to Allah Tabarakah. Wa ta'ala. And shaytan, as the Prophet sallallahu tells us, sufidat shayateen, or sufidat madidat shayateen. The rebels, the shayateen, they are chained. And one of the ways the shaytan is chained is because we are hungry, we, we're hungry and we're thirsty, as the Prophet sallallahu tells us to make the ways of shaytan in our veins normal, because shaytan is the ibn ibn adam, mujirid dhimmi. The way your blood um, runs in your veins, Shaitan has that passing power. Because Allah Taala allows him to, but He also gives us a strong power, he gives us a force with which we can fight back. That's why we say, "Alhamdulillah, Inna Shaitan Rajim." We are last a week. Shaitan did indicate that Shaitan is kind of ba'ida. But if you don't know how to bar for the Taala, then the Lord of Shaitan will not give you the right to do it. لا ترون أن جعل الشياطين أولياء للذين لا يؤمنون 
And this Ramadan, the fasting also shows us how insignificant this dunya we are running after. We um, go after things, but if we look at the fasting, the days we are uh, fasting, 30 days, you know, in normal days, if you think about it, you say, I cannot do it. But when Ramadan comes, before you start Ramadan, you will realize that it's about to um, get over. So if you look at uh, the way Ramadan runs, how fast it is, you will realize, well, wait a minute, dunya is also like this. Since I was born, I have been doing this and this and this. Now I'm 30, I'm 40, I'm 50, I'm 60. What did I do in my life? It looks like I just was born yesterday. Many of the things I wanted to do, I never got to do them. Or even if I did them, I'm still not happy. I'm still not satisfied. I still want more. And am I going to uh, choose this very short dunya over the everlasting akhirah? So Ramadan teaches us that this, this is nothing, you know, and nothing in our way can, uh, can, 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 can um, block us. We have the will, we have the khilafah, al ilahiyah جَعَلَكُمْ خَلَائِفَةً And the ikhwanu su, people who are, I mean, what we call it bad company. The bad company, you know, you have less of them in Ramadan because during the day, um, you don't get to do maybe much because you're hungry and thirsty, you get lazy maybe. But and during the night, you have taraweeh. If you go to taraweeh, they have nowhere to find you but in the masjid. And when they come to the masjid, then you have nothing to do but to worship together. So Ramadan is helping us, you know, get near to Allah Tabaraka wa ta'ala. So when we get near to Allah, when everything is um, removed, then there is nothing between us and Allah Tabaraka wa ta'ala. Therefore, our dua is to be accepted. That's why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam says, ثَلَاثُ دَعَوَاتٍ لَا تُلَدُّ دَعْوَةُ الْوَالِدِ وَدَعْوَةُ الصَّائِمِ وَدَعْوَةُ الْمُسَافِرِ The hadith is a very haqi, the sunan al-kubra. Free du'as are never rejected. The du'a of the parents for his child or for their child. Da'watu al-sa'imi and the du'a of the fasting person. Wa da'watu al-musafiri and the du'a of the one who travels. These three du'as according to Mawlana Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam be rejected. And in another hadith narrated by Abu Hurairah in the hadith in Timidhi and Ibn Majata, Rasulullah Three people, their dua are never rejected. Al Imam Al Adil, a just leader. May Allah get, make us all just leaders. Was and a person, and the, and the fasting person, when he breaks in his fast. And the dua of the oppressed. May we not be oppressing, and may Allah Taala grant relief all the oppressors. Oppressed they are. That's why Abdullah ibn Amr, when uh, time of bread uh, arrives, when, when, when time of futur arrives, he will call his family, his children, wives, and everyone to make dua together. Because that's the time of uh, acceptance of dua. For Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, for the fasting person, when he breaks his fast, a dua that will not be rejected. So if we know that this is Ramadan, this Ramadan is a time of dua to be accepted. We are, uh, most of the time in the masajid where our du'as are accepted, we need to know the um, adab of dua, the uh, manners which we need to have when we make dua. When we make dua, as Imam Ghazali, Rahmatullah, and Imam Nawi, and other scholars uh, summarize that they have uh, mentioned the certain things which one need when, when one needs when one makes a dua. And first of all is a tawajjuhu ila Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala bi ikhlasin wa su'alihi wa su'aluhu bi sidqin wa tadarru'u ilayhi. We um, give all our attention to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when making, when making dua. Do not allow yourself to be distracted when you make dua and know sincerely that only Allah can 
um, solve and uh, accept your dua and only make dua uh, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And number two, he says, they say, al ilhahu bi duaai al ilhahu bi duaai meaning you do not say, I made this dua yesterday, I don't need to do it today. Do it, because dua itself is an act of worship. Forget about the acceptance of dua. The fact that Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala accepted you to make dua, accepted you to, 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 to be to have the privilege of asking <coughs> that itself is a blessing you need to um, thank Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala for. So keep making dua. When you make dua, it is an act of worship you are fulfilling. Allah says, Udu'uni, it is an amr. It's a command of Allah that we make uh, dua. And Adamu Listi'jali, meaning we do not uh, rush, we do not Say, I make dua, I make dua, but my dua is never accepted. The Prophet says, This is one of the signs which shows that Allah wa ta'ala rejects the person or abandons the uh, person. The Prophet says, one, The dua of a person is going to be accepted as long as he is not in haste. So, he, who are you to be in haste when it comes to Allah wa ta'ala? You know, everything you have as of now is from Allah subhanahu. Ta'ala. So you um, realize, you need to realize that when you make uh, dua, you are already given more than maybe what you are asking. And when the person makes a dua, it is among the manners of dua. And yabda al abdu dua'ahu bihamdillahi wa thana'i alayhi thumma salati ala nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. To start by praising, with praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, make alhamdulillah in thana of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then pray upon Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then make dua. When the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saw a person making dua directly, he says this person is in rush. He should praise Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala first, then pray, uh, pray upon me, then make dua. The scholars say when a dua is started with the prayers of Allah and the prayer upon Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and you make your dua in closing, with the prayer, with Salat ala Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allah will never reject a dua between Salatu Salawat ala Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, not because of us, but because of the love Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala has for Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alihi wa Sahbihi wa Sallam. And when a person also makes dua, if he wants his dua to be accepted, he wants to avoid making dua for anything that is sin, such as making dua against your own family, a dua ala al-ahli wal-mali wal So certain people have this a'ada, they, um, when, they, when they are angry at their child or at their wives or husband or family or friend, they will make dua against them. And this is also something to be um, avoided because you don't know what's going to happen. When you make dua and the malaika say, amin walak, you know, I mean, and for you also the same, the dua of the malaika will not be rejected. So you are making dua against someone, maybe you are making dua against your own self. So we will want to be very careful when we make dua against a person. Even against a person who is not a believer, it's, it's, we should be very careful. The Prophet it was not from his hadith to make dua against the disbelievers, except in... Um, particular circumstances. The disbelievers, they need dua for hidayah. That's what they need. They don't need dua, you know, to be destroyed or all these things. No, they, we need to make dua for them to join us. You know, Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala says the Jannah is bigger than the heavens and earth. So you and I cannot fill it up. Inshallah, everyone is, uh, you know, welcome in the Lahi Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. That's how a believer should should be. And one of the uh, manners one needs to have or uh, do when they make dua is to have wudu. Wudu is uh, of great importance because when you are in wudu, you, need to, you are in a state of spiritual purity. Uh, in the Sibbal <coughs> Qibla, if you uh, make dua, you know, facing the, the Qibla is also one of the means for dua to be ex uh, accepted. وخفض الصوت والإصرار بالدعاء إن كان إذا 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 كنت هرجن when you are alone you don't need to um, 
uh, child, you can, you know, it's better that you make dua as low as possible. That is one of the ways of showing humility before your Rabb subhanahu wa ta'ala. But when you are in jama'ah, you can do it, you know, loud because it's a, it's a, it's a jama'ah dua, it's a dua jama'i. And adam al-takallufi, this saj'i, this dua'i, you know, you don't want to kill yourself for trying to find words, you know, right, to, to, you know, make rhymes, you know. Uh, of course, uh, you can do them, but you don't have to do takallub. Wa ma ana min al You know, the Prophet sallallahu these du'as are all rhymed because that's how he was. Naturally, he says, u'titu jawami al-kalimi. Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala gives me the um, jawami al-kalim. Few words with, you know, uh, unlimited meanings and the beauties of uh, great excellence. That's the ways of Rasulullah, the words of the Prophet Sallallahu But if you want to make dua and you are thinking of the rhyming, of rhyming the words, you, you know, you you lose a line in, in, in you know, in the, in the in the way. And one also has to know the mawani' mawani' or asbabu mani'i li jabati. You know, there are things which cause our dua to be rejected. And from among the uh, most uh, important of those ones are adam ikhlas lack of sincerity. Making dua to someone else other than Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. And adam al-shalsi ala al-mat'am al-harami. Well, mashrab al-haram, well, malbas al-haram. You know, we need to uh, make sure that our uh, eating, our food, our drink, and our clothing, and everything we deal with is is halal. You know, the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu when he talked about this person who um, traveled. And when you are in a journey, the Prophet sallallahu as we mentioned the hadith earlier, da'watul musafir, the prayer of the person, Traveling is accepted. So the Prophet said this person is traveling, he travels, so his dua is to be accepted. And he was uh, ash'ad, he was very tired and suffering and humbled before Allah wa ta'ala. That is also a sign of our dua to be accepted. And he said the person raised his two hands. And raising our hands when making dua is one of the causes for our dua to be Accepted, and he was saying, Ya Rabbi, Ya Rabbi. And whenever you call Ya Rabbi, Ya Rabbi, Allah answered and say, Yeah, my servant, say what you want, tell me what you want, and I will do it. But the Prophet says, With all these things, the dua of this person was not accepted. Why? Because his mat'am was haram, his milbis was haram, his mushrab was haram, was huddiya was haram. And Allah says, Fa'anna yustajabul, or Rasulullah says, Fa'anna yustajabul. I mean, he has his food, his drink, his clothes, his life, haram. How can his dua be, accept, be accepted? And the heedlessness also is one of the things which cause our dua to be rejected. We want to be present when we oh, wow. make dua. And uh, one of the most important stories, which I will be um, closing with, the story of Sayyidina Ibrahim ibn Idlam one of the greatest people of Basra. He once was asked by the people of Basra, What's the problem? Allah says in the Quran, make dua, and I accept your dua. But why we make dua all the time, then our dua is not, is not, is not accepted. Ibrahim ibn Adam says, it is because of 10 things which have made your hearts hard. Your hearts become hard because of ten, because of ten things. And brothers and sisters, let us examine ourselves. Let us see you and I if we are in the category of uh, these uh, people or any of these ten things. Ten things is in uh, is in us. If yes, we need to try our best to um, remove it. First of all, make dua that Allah wa Taala remove it from all of us and make us the best of. Of his servants, so I mean, he says, Because one by one you know Allah, but you don't obey Him. If you know Allah, you truly know Allah, you will obey Him. Allah says, You know, when we drive, when we see just the 
police officer because of a fine, we obey them. You are by the presence of an animal, a lion, you, you obey them. Why? Because you don't want to be killed. You have someone who has a gun in front of you, you obey them. Why? But Allah Taala is who? He's the one who created billions of billions of more powerful uh, you know, universes and planets than these tiny beings that we all are scared when they are in front of us. So if we know him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, the fruit is to, to obey him. He says, number one, 